Rwanda, Aruba, Philippines, Dominican Republic, and Ghana. This is Group 17 of the Head to Head Challenge. Sunny day in London, and we have Canary Wharf in our backs, ladies. We're very lucky today to see it this way. And another head to head, of course. How are you feeling, girls? Great. Great. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. You see, are you really great? Yeah. <laughs> it's been really cold here in London, so it's nice to have the sun out shining. Yeah. Yeah. You can feel a little warm yeah. there. Mm -hmm. So, ready or not, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> we will start with Rwanda. Hello, I'm Megan Nimiza, proudly representing Rwanda in Miss World 2019. A remarkably beautiful country, a fabulous destination for wildlife and adventure, a land of a thousand hills. Growing up in a technology era, but also growing up in Rwanda where agriculture is an important part of our lives, made me realize how passionate I am about both of them. That drove me to studying computer science, and I'm determined to pursue further studies in agriculture. Being born in a family that believes in service, I was raised to become a community person. And I believe in serving the society, especially the vulnerable people around us. At the age of 20, I was crowned Miss Rwanda 2019, giving me the opportunity to reach out and impact as many lives as I could. I am more than willing to share this experience with you if you're willing to come with me. See you in London. Rwanda, you're one of the very few people that I know are very interested in agriculture. How did you got into it? Uh, yeah, I get this question a lot in interviews, um, the people I tell that mm. I love agriculture and I don't really think I've ever really been able to answer it right because I don't think you can fully explain why you're passionate about what you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. But I'll answer this in, in two ways. One being I grew up in a family that loves and is passionate about agriculture so mm. I got to love it. Uh, I, I grew up in the city where you don't see a lot of agriculture uh, going on, but my dad used to take us to the countryside, to farms, uh, to see whatever goes on. And I am really happy I got to experience that kind of that, that uh, other part of life. And I remember falling in love with everything that happens there, from people planting crops to um, people harvesting, to 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 people taking care of livestock, and. What shocked me the most is I saw the same faces every day, every day, and no young person. Everyone was 55 years and above, and I kept seeing that, and I was really moved. I can say I, I, I got to love agriculture at that young age, but as I grew up, I realized that it is something that is not given the most attention, yeah. which actually gets me to the second reason I love agriculture, as many African countries, our country um, also depends on agriculture. Mm -hmm. And specifically for our country, 70% of its economy is, is based on agriculture. But you'll find it surprising that um, the people involved in agriculture, the average age of the people involved in agriculture is 55 years and above. And it really moved me because I started thinking of 20 years ahead, 25 years ahead, when these people cannot go to firms anymore. Our young people still think that um, the most um, cool businesses are, you know, uh, being in a shop or having, you know, all those kind of stuff we, we usually think about. But I say agriculture is actually cooler than all of them because without it, a lot of them wouldn't even survive. Yeah, so. of course. And what is your beauty with purpose about? My beauty with a purpose, I, I try to come into my field, which is agriculture again, <laughs> and um, 
but also work, work with the people that are more close to my heart and those are children. I love children, I love seeing children. And I remember it always broke my heart to see a child suffer, to see a child having um, malnutrition, to see a malnourished child. Because every time I see a child, I just get those memories back. Like um, if every time I see a child, I start remembering what I did at their age, where I was at their age. And I don't want these children to be remembering, to be having these memories um, that are not good, having memories of, of suffering from hunger, having memories that um, draw them back. And the government has done quite a lot to, to, to deal with this situation back home, but there are some villages that are really facing malnutrition. So I felt like I needed to do something for them. I remember as a child, we used to walk past children in the roads with, uh, with my mom, and I would be all over my mom to give them a coin because I didn't want to see them suffer. And I remember thinking to myself, if I ever become rich, I will take all these children with me. And so I am not rich. So you started working on your beautiful yeah. purpose then, which is? Which is uh, fighting malnutrition in the children. So I am not rich now, but I am definitely in a better position to help them. And as an empowered young lady, I want to do it and maybe do it even more when, when you know, I'm in an even better position. I'm sure you'll do it. Yeah. Thank you very much, Brianda. You're welcome. Now, Aruba. My name is Jose Mejia, and I was raised in one of the happiest places in the world, Aruba. I am blessed to come home every day to a huge family that consists of my parents, four other siblings, and many pets. A family based on respect, love, and unity. They have always encouraged me to explore new opportunities. One of them was at age of 14 when I competed in the National Top Model Contest and was a top 20 semi-finalist. From there, Miss Team and Miss Aruba followed. I grew up knowing that hard work pays off. And in that belief, I established my healthy food restaurant, Simply Cuisine, to motivate and support others in developing a balanced lifestyle. Because I strongly believe that everything in life is possible with determination and discipline. And as I aim at contributing to the greatest of humanity, I want to be an inspiration to others and to voice that we are in this world to reach out, to help each other and lift each other. But very importantly, have faith in yourself, believe in yourself, be there to help others and always be grateful in life, as each new day is a brand new opportunity. West, you're breathing, I see you <laughs> holding your hands. Like, yeah. Are you praying? <laughs> Nothing but it's gonna happen, I swear. Yeah, I'm nervous. Hold it, no. Mm -hmm. Don't be, it's just a chat between friends. Yeah. And we really want to know more about you. And you just recently opened your restaurant. Yeah. I think that's amazing. <laughs> Congratulations. Yes, thank you. Um, first of all, I want to thank my parents for always believing in me and for mm -hmm. their support. I'm blessed with a big family that support each other, even if we have sometimes we have fights. We all do. <laughs> so Simply Cuisine is a small delivery only restaurant. Mm -hmm. The first year of Simply Cuisine was paper process and we had a lot of bumpies in the way. So at one point I wanted to give up, but then everything changed on Sunday when me and a friend, we were meal prepping for a family member. And I remember I was styling the meal box and then after I finished, I took a picture and I told him, you know what, I will post this on our Facebook page. At that time we had like 100 likes. So I uploaded this picture and then from that moment in one night, the likes went from 100 to 500 or more. And the shocking thing is, <laughs> Um, people start asking information like our menu, location, price, but we didn't have nothing at that time. <laughs> so since then, Simply Cuisine came alive. I feel empowered for many reasons. My restaurant is about helping people with balanced meals mm -hmm. to encourage a healthy lifestyle. Um, the idea came two years ago when I started my healthy lifestyle. I went to the gym every day. Mm -hmm. um, one of my vision is, is um, I want to collaborate with foundation, local foundation and government to not only provide, because I help many people on the street, addicts or homeless, to provide them with meals. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and one of my goals is, as soon as I can expand my restaurant, I want to work in collaboration with local foundation and government to not only provide the homeless or addicts on the street, but also the children at school with breakfast meals. Which leads me to your Beat with a Purpose. What yes, is your Beat with a Purpose about? Yeah. My Beat with a Purpose is called Hero of Life. It doesn't necessarily mean saving someone's life, but it means being your own hero, pushing yourself every day mm-hmm. to become a better person, personally and professionally. From a young age, I started helping less unfortunate children and homeless and addicts on the street. Um, because I strongly believe in the cause of humanity. I've become more convinced that they need our help and support to progress in life regardless of their challenges. So winning the Miss Aruba World, I wanted to work with rehabilitating individuals because these individuals need our love, support, acceptance, emotional and also moral support to get back in the community. I think the best feeling you can experience in life is putting a smile on someone's face, especially these people, because everyone needs to be happy in this world, no matter the situation. That's very true, Aruba. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now it's time for Philippines. Growing up on a ranch, I knew the simple life. Enjoying the beauty of nature from the open fields, the fresh air, the animals, and the precious time spent with family. The ranch life brought out my adventurous side. I love the rush that sports and adrenaline-filled activities give me. Having grown up with two autistic siblings taught me the concept of purpose. Autism awareness isn't just an advocacy for me, but a lifelong mission. I embarked on this pageant journey driven by purpose and motivated by my heart knowing that this is bigger than myself. It is for my siblings, my family, my advocacy, and for the Filipino people. Much more than the natural beauty of my country, it is the stunning beaches, majestic mountains, progressive cities, and of course, the Filipinos themselves that I'm most proud to show off to the world. My countrymen embody a sense of resilience and tenacity that I believe is truly unique within our culture. I am now living in a reality which wasn't a dream of mine when I was younger, but was born purely out of purpose and passion. I am Michelle Marquez D. Miss World Philippines 2019, proudly raising my flag not only to make my country proud, but to show the world what we Filipinos have to offer. Talking about what Filipinos have to offer, yesterday we were on our way to the House of Lords (laughs) and people started screaming and it was like, they they recognized us and they were, no, they were asking for, where's Miss Philippines? Where's Miss Philippines? (laughs) And you have people waiting with your cell phones, you have such a good group of fans. It's it's very humbling to see the support that they've been showing me, even just the staff here in the hotel. They've been taking care of me, giving me Filipino food because they know how much I'm homesick for Filipino food. And it's amazing, Mm -hmm. Mr. World was held in Philippines, so don't you miss it? (laughs) I miss the food, for sure. But back to business, back to business. you used to live in a ranch. Yes, I That's did. very different from the city. Yes, Do you very miss different. it? Of course I miss it. I miss remembering the times I had back on the ranch because I feel like it really curated me into the person that I am now. Mm-hmm. Um, I gained a sense of love for animals. I learned how to do all of my adventurous sides there, learning how to ride ATV, learning how to groom horses, how to herd cows, how to shave goats, how to milk animals mm-hmm. in general. I remember my stepdad could never get control of me Mm. because I was this eight-year-old little kid driving in fourth gear when he said only to go up until second, and I broke my arm. Mm. Thankfully, I still have my arm right now. (laughs) But it's just such an amazing time. But more importantly, growing up in such a humble town of six to 7,000 people, um, it really taught me the purpose of independence. And if you want something for yourself, that you really have to work hard for it. And you can't just depend on the people that are next to you to give you what you want in life. And to just touch on that, that's why I moved to the Philippines as well. At the age of around 15, 
I wanted to get to know my father's side more. And uh, it was then that my father really helped me in terms of my head game. We're a very spiritual, spiritual side of the family as well. And he really helped me just own my, my capabilities. And it was also where I gained the relationship with my grandmother. My grandmother is such an angel. When she was on earth, she was an angel on earth. She passed away five years ago. It was her death anniversary prior to coming here. And I really credit my love for giving back to her. She has spent her whole life or most of her life giving back despite her position of privilege. Um, she founded this foundation called Inner Peace Foundation. And it's basically a group of people that come together to share their experiences and to just help each other grow. And it's been in existence for more than I've been alive. And it's just so humbling to have that kind of values and qualities that raise you because it really gives you a sense of purpose, a sense of belonging, and a sense that you really just want to give back to people that help you. And, uh, and now onto and your now, video with a purpose, I think, because <laughs> everything's going on that direction, I see. What is your beauty with a purpose? Well, my beauty, of a, my beauty with a purpose is autism awareness. And I grew up with two autistic siblings, one older and one younger. So since I had an older sibling with autism, it really showed me firsthand what these kids or individuals on a spectrum go through. Uh, and coming from the States or coming from the USA, you really see the difference of loss of health services that are embedded in the community or in the laws, or even just the educational system, which is very absent in the Philippines yeah. nowadays. We don't have a law that protects autistic individuals. We don't have those health services readily available for them. So the foundation that I work with is with Autism Society Philippines, and they're the nation's widest and largest um, autism awareness community and they've spearheaded so many things in the Philippines including the National Autism Care Plan. Mm -hmm. um, as In addition to that they also have 97 chapters all across the Philippines and the reason why I work so closely with them is because I recently made a trip to the mountain province of Sagada and it's deep down north in the Philippines and I was there for a medical mission and we catered to learning people with learning disabilities and just disabilities as a whole. And it really warmed my heart because I saw people that from five years back couldn't even speak, couldn't even converse. And now they're speaking, they're having fun. And when I found out that some families of over like 100 would travel five, six hours by foot just to get to these, uh, to the institution, it really, it really opened my eyes to see that this is what I want to help. This is how I want to help my country. I want to, in, I want to add these chapters all across the rural areas. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, um, the Autism Society of Philippines has also a campaign that's called Autism Works. And here, we give training and we help families and big establishments really train individuals on a spectrum to have a, a more sense of purpose. Because the, the misconception with individuals on the, on, on the autism spectrum is that they have no purpose. They can't do anything. But what the reality is, is if you just give them the right opportunities, if you give them the right place in the world, then they will feel like they belong. And that's what I really want for them. I want them mm -hmm. to be happy. Yeah, I think that uh, I'm so happy that you're following your grandmother's legacy. Yes. We're proud of you, Philippines. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you so much. Now, Dominican Republic. Hello, my name is Alba Blair and I come from La Isla del Merengue, Dominican Republic. Besides our beautiful beaches and white sand, we have gorgeous mountains and rivers in the rural area like the one I'm from called Jarabacoa. Here, my family and I grow coffee, macadamia nuts, lime, and other fruits. I am passionate about nature and a strong believer that we must take care of Mother Earth and teach others the same. I currently study business administration and walk the runway. 
An interesting fact about myself and my family is that we're passionate about helping others. We have always been involved with foundation like the Lions Club because we believe that who does not live to serve does not serve to live. What motivates me is a chance to have a new day and the opportunity to achieve new goals. Miss World Organization has given me the opportunity to grow and learn new things that strengthen me and prepare me for my journey ahead. They have helped me become the voice of the unheard and taught me great ways to be a helping hand in contributing to my community and country. I am currently working with the project of the Nazare Children Orphanage in the province of Puerto Plata. There we help children with mental and physical disabilities who are abandoned by their family at birth and giving them an incredible place to live that they can call home. I always make sure that the kids' day-to-day -day needs are met, including love, laughter, and respect. Miss World adds to my purpose to continue to help and empower young women to be the best version of themselves. I do this through my town pageant, Queen of the Flowers, that I have a great honor of coordinating and leading. Our team work to integrate and promote young women to represent their communities. This project is important to me because I get to teach young women that they're capable of doing anything they set their minds to. Dominican Republic, tell us more about this festival that you created, the Flower Festival. Well, the Flower Festival was actually a foundation. It's called Foundation Festival of the Flowers. It's been working out for 10 years. In that foundation, we do many activities to help and promote um, culture. And one of them is the Festival of the Flowers. The Festival of Flowers promotes culture, economical growth, um, and we take care of planet Earth. We make sure that people know how to and take that message all around Dominican Republic. And through Festival of the Flowers, we have Queen of the Flowers. That is a project that I've been doing for nine years. Um, under my coordination for four years, my sister and I did this project together because we saw the lack of opportunity, the lack of identity, teenagers, pregnancy, prostitutions, and drug. So what we did is that we decided to do this pageant that will help girls to develop, to be um, leaders of their communities, and for they could be an inspiration to other young girls because we teach them that they are capable of doing anything they set their minds to. And it's fine that we come from a small country and more Jarabacoa, that's a tiny little place of Dominican Republic. It's a paradise and you could do everything there that you want to do it from Jarabacoa to the whole entire world because they set their minds to, they could do it. Yeah, you have to be proud of where you come from, or where you're going. Yes. And now your Beauty with a Purpose, what is it about? Well, my Beauty with a Purpose, I'm working with the children of Nazare. They're children with mental, physical disabilities. Mm -hmm. Right now, they don't have a home that's going to be taken away from them. So one of our goals is to be able to make a center where they have doctors, where they have nurses, where they have a space that they could develop and grow. Because some of um, they're all together. They're 15 children and boys and girls, different ages from 3 to 20. 21 they're all together so we're trying to separate them give them their space and make sure that they their day-to-day -day needs are met because sometimes they only have the food of today but they don't know what's the food of tomorrow so we're making sure that every month they're sending groceries that every month they have new medicine and they're fine with that Oh, that's a beautiful work that you do. You're not letting them down. No, no, no. You're staying with them. Even though um, I don't accomplish making the center that I want to make them as Miss World Dominican Republic, I'm going to stick by them until that um, purpose is complete and done. That's the spirit. That's <laughs> what I like to hear. Thank you, Dominican Republic. And last but not least, Ghana. Hello everyone, my name is Rebecca Kwabi, 26 years of age, a student of Marine Signature Stead in Fashion and Designing. I'm a proud representative of my esteemed country Ghana, a beacon of hope of Africa, and a contestant of this year Miss World 2019. Born in Terma, a city that's centrally located on the Greenwich Meridian, I consider myself to be loving, focused, confident, and determined. 
My involvement with Miss Ghana Foundation and Beauty with a Purpose is to create awareness and predicament that affect us all and to be a servant to the less privileged. My country, Ghana, is a heaven of peace and prosperity, productive, hardworking, and hospitable people. We take pride in our rich culture, our abundance of natural resources, and the tolerance of our people. I'm so excited to meet over 100 beautiful ladies across the globe. Medaze, thank you. Thank you, Shan. Shishi, Melsi Bohu. Bye. How are you feeling, Ghana? Oh, I'm feeling so excited to be here today. <laughs> well, we're excited, and you're the last one? <laughs> yes. Who won you? Tell me, you have a twin sister. Yes, I have a wonderful twin sister, very supportive. We've been together since childhood. No one separates us. Even if my, my auntie comes from my twin sister, she comes back to me. She prays for me, I pray for her. We wake up together, we do everything together. After primary school, we went to SHS. We were sitting in a different desk, and the teachers in the class they didn't know there were twins in the class. But anytime they mark our books, they see similar names, and they are like, who are these girls in this class? So my economic teacher came to the class and was like, who is Rebecca, who is Regina? The student was like, so there are twins in this class? We said, yes. Why are you separated? We are like, our headmistress said we should sit separate because she doesn't want people to know that they are twins in the class, so that we should trick them. <laughs> So it was it's it's very fun. After school, I worked. I helped my sister to go to the university. After she was done, I have she has to work for me to also go to school. So we support each other. My family has been so supportive. Um, my daddy was my chauffeur when I won Miss Ghana. Aww. Yes, she has been driving me day in and day out. She's been he's been so good. Like my family has been so supportive. My daddy is very strict, but. They were so supportive when I told them I wanted to go for Miss Ghana. They were like, okay, fine, you can go. They were praying. They were backing me up. Like, my family has been so good. I don't know, I don't know how to express my love for them, but I really thank God for the life of my family and how far he has really brought us. We can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> we can all feel it. Don't worry. And what about your beauty with a purpose, My Ghana? beauty with a purpose is about scoliosis. Scoliosis is a disorder of the spinal cord. And a friend of mine suffered from this sickness and it was so bad. She couldn't go to school. She couldn't speak. She couldn't sleep properly. There was this machine on her head for her to be, for her to be able to stand firmly because without that, she would go like this. Mm -hmm. She would suck in and that would, be, that would affect her spinal cord. People die from scoliosis. In Ghana, a lot of people don't know about scoliosis. When you talk about scoliosis, they'll ask you, what is scoliosis? So we, I took this upon myself to create awareness in the country for people to know what scoliosis is about. My friend actually, the doctors didn't know the trace of the sickness. But I met one guy in Focus Orthopedic Hospital and he was like, his was typhoid fever. And I'm like, really? Typhoid fever? And the cost is so expensive, 20,000 US dollars. So my team and I came together, we were like, we need to go to people to help us raise funds for this little boy. So we organized a kid bazaar, which is a kid fair to raise money. We had a little money, so we went to the uh, corporate people for them to also help us, and we were able to raise that 20,000 US dollars for the little boy. I also organized a blood donation because after the surgery, they, they, lo they lose a lot of ton uh, tons of blood. So we need to organize blood donation for that little boy so that after the surgery, they can fuse in the blood into us so that he will be able to go back to his friends, his family, go back to school, learn, and also be what he wants to be in the future. Yeah, that's, that's very true, Ghana. Thank you very much. It's such an amazing project, and I know you'll do right. Thank you. That was it. You're head-to-head, -head, <laughs> ladies. Are you okay now? Yes. Well, relax. <laughs> well, you did great, so congratulations to Thank all of you. you. And now is the time for you to vote for your favorite contestant. Use our, all our social media platforms, Mobster, Instagram, Facebook, and of course, MissWorld.com. I'll see you soon with Group 18.